In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn this picture into this using one of these. Uh, this is welcome to my composition. Uh, I've, I've arrived at Hengistbury Head in just down the road is Bournemouth, that way is Christchurch, and I found a beautiful little comp uh, composition on this uh, headland here on the actual spit of the land. And what I want to do is use this, my big stopper, to create really ethereal, smoky water, and I really want to freeze the. Oh, I don't want to freeze the action. Sorry, I want to. Um, seas coming in, so I better hurry up. I really want to just get glassy smooth water, I don't want to freeze the water, so we're going to do a long exposure. Now what we have to do, we have to, if you put it in aperture priority, and if you just take a meter reading, for example I've just done that, I've selected my aperture at f16, and the meter has said that it wants me to shoot, that it, the, app, the, the shutter speed it recommends would be a 40th of a second. Now the good thing is with the big stopper at Lee filters, they give you an exposure calculator card. So if we just have a quick look, 1 40th of a second, 60th of a second would be 15, 30th would be 30, let's say a 40th would be somewhere in between 15 and 30, let's say we need to expose for around about 23, 24 seconds. So, you can do one of two things, you can go into bulb mode and shoot yourself, not shoot yourself, but you can actually um, have a, uh, a cable release so you can control exactly how long you're exposing for, or you can use the, the timer that's built in in manual so you can expose, I think it's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 seconds. So what we're going to do, I'm actually going to expose for about 20 seconds first of all, because uh, you, you must protect your highlights when you're doing long exposure. Because if you don't, you blow your highlights, game over. You can't bring them back. So, I'm going to pop this on just to show you how dark the filter makes the, the shot. And then I'm going to take it. Okay, so I've just changed my composition, I've come uh, further up the jetty as you can probably see and I've stuck on the wide angle lens now because I want to try and get a little bit, want to reach out a bit further to try and get a little bit more water involved and create a bit more of a, I don't know, a warped perspective and it was a little bit dodgy down there, a few hairy moments with the waves so it's a bit more peaceful up here. So I'm going to do exactly the same, I'm going to obviously pop the big stopper on, it's the same filter thread so obviously just check before you buy a big stopper check what the filter thread is because mine is a 77 millimeter thread and same as my Canon 24105 uh, the Tokina 11 to 16 it's got exactly the same thread so if you buy if you buy this and your thread doesn't match up to this and it's a waste of money basically or you have to spend money on an on an adapter so a couple of things make sure you shoot in manual if you don't shoot in manual um, it's going to make your life difficult because the camera's going to be predicting an exposure based on the based on the aperture that you choose. Choose your aperture first. I'd normally recommend using a quite a high number, quite a really shallow, uh, sorry, quite a narrow aperture. So around about between f9 and f22, some, anywhere in between that. And obviously the, the, the higher the number, the longer you can expose for. So think about that. The higher the number, the longer you can expose. But I have actually forgotten my cable release. So the highest I can expose today is 30 seconds, which is why I'm only going for around about f16. Normally I'd, I'd do an f22 shot, but um, after this I've got what I came for, I've had a, I've had a cracking morning, I've got some great sum sunrise shots as well, so check the blog for, uh, for some of those. And yeah, I really hope you like the shots, uh, remember to subscribe, like, share, and I'll see you soon. Thank you!